Welcome back to R Programming 101. My name is Greg Martin. Today we're talking about facets. It's a function within ggplot, right? And facets are a lovely way to disaggregate your data, right? So you've got a plot and you want to look at the same plot but disaggregated by one or more categorical variable, right? And look at the plots next to each other to see differences. Facets are the way to do it. The example on the screen is an example of that. And you can see, and we're going to get to this plot, how I created this plot in just a minute. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. The columns here are political affiliation and the rows are religious affiliation, right? And each little block represents a sort of combination of either of political and religious affiliation. And we see the plot, this, in this case, it's a density plot for that group of people, right? By the way, any of the plots that I produce, the data that I use is available to you right now, right? When you install the packages that I'm going to point to, the data is automatically on your computer and you can replicate my code and do what I'm doing on your computer at home to practice. More than that, what's quite exciting is, this is a new thing that I'm doing, the entire script of this video and the code and all of the outputs, so here's the code that I'm using, are available as a PDF, and there'll be a card at the end of the video that you can click on and download the PDF. And at the end of the PDF, this is quite exciting, I've got QR codes and links that you can use to watch other videos or even this video. How have I got a QR code and a link to the video that you're watching right now in a PDF when the video hasn't been posted yet? Is this an example of time travel? Put your comments in the description, in the, in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Let's get back into the video. Let's go right up to the top. We're talking about facets. Here's some code and I'm not gonna go through this code in detail, right? we've written some code that produces this plot over here. I'll walk through the code just very briefly. We've got the Gapminder data. Gapminder, if you install packages Gapminder and it, you get access to the Gapminder data set, which is right here. We're interested in continent, life expectancy, and GDP per capita in this particular plot. Right, so we've piped in, we've done some filtering, we've piped the data into ggplot, we've defined our aesthetics, x-axis is GDP per capita, y-axis is life expectancy, we've disaggregated by color as an aesthetic, so the individual plot points will have different colors depending on what continent that data point is in that observation. We've our geometry is geo and point. I've said make it a square, alpha 0.4, that's the transparency, size equals two. We've put some labels and a black and white theme. And here we've got the plot. Okay, so far easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The problem with this plot is that it's quite difficult to see the difference between the different continents in terms of the, the relationship between GDP per capita and life expectancy. So what do we wanna do? We wanna separate out these data points into separate plots that are next to each other. And let's have a look at what that looks like. This is what it looks like here. Uh, here we've got Africa, Americas, Asia, and Europe all in separate plots, and we can see the differences between them. I've superimposed a pot on top of that just a GM smooth, so you can see the direction of travel. And instead of color, because we don't need color to disaggregate by continents anymore, I've associated color with year. And so the lighter blocks are more recent and the darker ones are further apart, further in the distance past, right? How did we get there? Well, the part that I want you to see here is this, the facet wrap. And this little tilde here is by continent, right? So it just means we've made a wrap. It's wrapped, it's, it's, it's created facets, and it's used the categorical variable or the factor continent to determine what, what the sort of headings will be. So far, pretty easy. Stick with me. Okay, the next thing I want to teach you is you can, within the facet wrap, within facet wrap here, I've just put facet wrap continent, there are additional arguments that you can put in there to determine, for example, how many rows, how many columns, and where it is that it's gonna stick the strip, for example. So let's, let's have a look at that. Here's a, another data set that I wanna introduce you to. If you install packages for cats, which is a lovely package that helps you with analyzing categorical variables, it's got some, some really interesting functions there within, but when you've installed it, you automatically get this data set, GSS cat. Here's the data set here. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but basically it's got people by political affiliation and other sort of characteristics. In this case, if I run this code, let's just run that code. I'm wanting to, I'm just looking at the age distribution by political affiliation. So we've got strong Republicans, independents, and strong Democrats, right, in this particular graph. I'm wanting them side by side. And so what I've done here in the code, I've said facet wrap again, the tilde sign is by political ID, that's the variable, 
that we're interested in. And then I've said number of rows equals one. I just want one row and number of columns equals three, three columns. In fact, if I didn't say number of columns, that would it, it wouldn't matter, right? Because it would just stick everything in one row. But I just wanted to highlight that this is an argument that you can put into the function. Now, n col equals three means we're going to have three columns. And then strip position is the bottom. As you can see in the plot down here, the strong Republican, independent, and strong Democrat are all labeled at the bottom instead of the top. There are other arguments that you can put into the facet wrap. So I wanted to show you that you can do that. Let's keep going. Right, next, the next function I want to teach you is facet grid. And this is where we land up using two categorical variables, right? The political affiliation as columns and religious affiliation as rows, right? So, you, so each block has two categorical variables that that particular data set is disaggregated by. Really powerful way of visualizing data. And quite simply, I'm not going to go through all the code here, just to let you know, in this data set, it makes reference to people of the Islamic faith as Muslim. And I think, I'm not sure, but I suspect that that's not the preferred term. So I've just written some code here that changes it, that recodes it to Muslim. I think that that is the preferred term. If I've got this wrong in any way, please forgive me. I'm just trying to, I'm wanting to, to make sure that I get this as, as right as I know how. And so when I filter by religious affiliation, I've got Christians and Muslims. Right. I'm not going to go through all of this code because, again, we're not really trying to teach you ggplot. We're trying to teach you about faceting here. If we go down here to facet grid, we've got two arguments. We've got, well, it's, this is actually one argument. We're saying religious affiliation or relig, that's the one variable, tilde party ID, right? And just to let you know, the first part of the argument, relig, is going to tell the facet grid, which categorical variable or factor needs to be the row headings. And then the second one is the party headings, is the is the column headings, right? And we can see that right here, right? The political affiliations were the columns and the religious affiliations were the rows, right? So it's, it's uh, it rows by columns. And then the rest of it is pretty straightforward labels and themes. And we've got this particular grid. Once again, you could add in additional arguments, right? So you've got the space to create additional arguments for facet grid as well. Of course, uh, in the PDF that you can download, you're going to be able to get all of the additional help and videos. Stay and watch another video. I hope you found that useful. Click on the link on the card that's on the screen right now if you want to download this PDF, which I think you'll find quite useful. Make comments below, ask me any questions you want. I will try to answer them. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Don't ever change. Take care. Speak to you soon.